Hey makers, it's Charlotte with Makesy. I can't wait for you guys to see this amazing content that our bestie Joanna over at The Soap Gal has created so you can learn all about making cold process soap. Get ready to get sudsy. Let's go. Hey Sud Squad, Joanna Couch here, The Soap Gal. Today is such a special day. Do you know why? Because we are inviting in the new Hobby Lobby new soap makers. <laughs> oh my God, you're gonna be so addicted after you experience making soap and being able to share that with your family and your friends. And this is just such a privilege for me to be able to teach you how to make soap using the Hobby Lobby kit. First thing we're gonna do is open up this kit. So in this kit, you have 32 ounces of the Trinity blend. So two jars of 16 ounces of the Trinity blend. What is the Trinity blend? Well, let me tell you, the Trinity blend is the perfect blend of coconut, pure olive oil, and palm oil. I know, why is there palm oil in a recipe? Well, palm oil creates a very nice hard bar of soap. Coconut oil creates that creamy lather and it also helps with the cleansing properties of a bar of soap. And olive oil, especially pure olive oil, well, that's mwah. That is just soothing and moisturizing and just such a creamy lather. And um, it's also cleansing as well. So that is what's in the kit when it comes to the oils. And then you have this, which is a 50-50 lye solution. So the lye has already been made. So it's one part sodium hydroxide and one part water. That is the reason why you're going to have to add in an additional 4.5 ounces of water in this kit. So then that way your soap is not lye heavy. We don't want that. All right, and then Makesies is known for their mwah, fragrances. And this right here is Lavender Bloom and Soothing sand, Santal Wood. So it smells, oh my gosh. It is like fresh and floral, but it has that sandalwood undertone, very earthy kind of, um, let me think of the word, like leather like a floral leather it's not i would say it's definitely unisex and that will be the fragrance that we're using you really really should have a mold so i got this mold at hobby lobby it's a three pound mold um i like color so we're going to be using some of this french clay and then you definitely need an emulsion blender in order to be able to stir the soap up the other things that are so important, safety goggles. So I'm gonna put these on right now. Are I pretty? And then I would definitely say gloves. Because we have sodium hydroxide, which is a caustic, um, it can burn you. I want to make sure that you are safe. So, and these gloves are long. And it looks like I have two pairs, wonderful. All right, so let's put on these gloves and then we are gonna start measuring everything out. Another tip that you might wanna do for the first time is wear a long sleeve shirt. Um, that also can um, help you make sure that you don't get no batter on you, but if you do, make sure you rinse it well. Another thing I would definitely suggest is for you to um, maybe look up the safety data sheet for sodium hydroxide and read that. So then that way you truly know what this is. So let me move all this on the side. And um, the ingredients and the how to do this is also on the inside of this label. So you can read this right here. So you're gonna be using nine ounces of sodium hydroxide because this is 0 0.09 pounds, that is 14.4 ounces. So we're not gonna be using up this full bottle. I know how to make it, so I'm not gonna follow the directions. <laughs> All right, so let's open up this right here. Let's open up the motion blender. Probably should have opened this stuff up before I started filming, but I want you to be able to see what it looks like when it comes 
So once you have the Emotion Blender, you will be able to use this over and over and over again. It's a one-time investment. I mean, I think my first Emotion Blender like this, I made a thousand batches of soap before I got a new one. We are going to actually add some lavender buds to the top of our soap. So I'm just gonna set these over to the side. All right, some other things that you are going to need. The pitcher that came with it, but I would also suggest for you to get a smaller pitcher so then that way you could weigh out your additional water and you could also weigh out your sodium hydroxide 50-50. I would definitely suggest to have them to be two different types of pitchers or two different sizes so then that way you can remember which one is which. Right here I just have distilled water but the reason why I love the 50-50 solution is because you don't have to use distilled water. You could use goat's milk or coconut cream or aloe vera juice. There are so many different um, liquid additives that you could use instead of water. We are going to open up the mold so that way we are prepared for once we make it. So this mold is so cute. So it's a wooden mold and then it has a pink liner on the inside and it has a lid so then that way your soap is able to gel and you're not going to get ash on the top. All right so we're going to set that to the side. Let me plug in the motion blender and we're gonna start weighing everything out. Okay, another little trick that I love to do is I don't like leaving my motion blender on the counter. So I'm gonna actually grab another container that has some water in it and I'm just gonna set it on the side and then that way I'm able to put my motion blender in there and scale. You need a scale, I should have told you that. So you got a scale. And then I like to time everything. So once I make the soap, I know how long it takes. So when I make the soap again, I know how long that was. So I also have a timer so we can keep track. And then um, measuring spoons. So we can measure out our clay. And then I have a um, cutter here so I can cut the soap once it is completed. Now that I've told you everything that we have, let's start making soap. I'm just really excited to be here with you today and being able to be a part of this new journey with you and I want all of my Sud squad to be able to like welcome you and say hope you enjoy and please put, like, put in the comments of what's your first soap that you're going to be making and how your family liked it or how you liked it or what you want to do next because I definitely am here. I'm I'm like, woohoo! So let's get making. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is put this on your scale. And then the scale has this little button called tear. And we're just going to push that. So then that way it subtracts the weight of your pitcher. And then we're gonna be opening up the oil. And we're gonna just pour this into the pitcher. And it's weighing out. So it should be like 16 ounces. And then we're gonna zap it in the microwave to just make sure we get all the oil out. We're at like 14.7. So the rest we're gonna put in the microwave with we'll that. Melt, open up this one too. Pour that. As it is in the microwave, I don't want to change anything because I want to make sure I get the full 32 ounces of oil into the pitcher before I add any other ingredient. We're at 29.4 so I'm just going to stick this in the microwave while that is melting. I will set my timer so it's going to be for one minute. Yep. Pour the rest of this in. 32 ounces. Empty. Set this to the side gonna put this on here we're gonna tear it out again and we're gonna add 4.5 ounces of water okay to get my color I'm gonna add one ounce of this French clay to my water the reason why I love French clay, first of all, it's a natural color. The second reason is because it creates a nice slip to your bar of soap, but it also helps hold that fragrance in. So we're going to go to 5.5.
a little bit more. I am so excited to make this soap with you. Everything that we're using when it comes to the clay and the oils and the mold, I purchased it right at Hobby Lobby. So I guess we could say we shopped together. We have 5.5 ounces. Mix this all up. And then I'm gonna just add this to my oils. And now I'm going to put on my safety glasses. I'm going to open up my sodium hydroxide 50-50. So you're just going to push down and turn and up and it has the seal on it. And we're going to pull the seal off. You might want to use a fork or something to try to open it or just be patient. But I got it open. We're going to put this on the scale. We're going to zero it out and we are going to weigh out nine ounces. Okay, I'm at 9.2, I'm gonna put some back. A little bit more. There we go. And then I'm gonna put the lid back on so that way no air gets to it. All right, and now I will be able to use part of this for my next batch of soap. Now I have my fly solution. I have my amazing smelling fragrance ready to use, and I have my oils and my additives. Take our motion blender, and we're gonna start mixing for about one minute. <laughs> Once everything is completely incorporated and in all your additives that you're using in your oil base and your liquid, at that time is when we're going to add in our 50-50 lye solution. Another thing I like to do with this cup is I like to just immerse it right into my water bucket on the side. Okay, so now we're going to start, I'm gonna make sure we have our mold ready for us to be able to pour in, and we're gonna start mixing this up. Turn on our timer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so often like stop your mixer kind of stir and see if you have trace so what trace means is you're able to write your initials you're able to see the texture changing because of the thickness and we don't have trace yet so we're going to keep stirring <laughs> I have light trace now, so that's when I'm gonna add in my fragrance oil, which this is exactly what you need, one ounce. Now we're gonna stir that in. Now, as you can see, the texture changed and you can see the drips inside the bucket. I want you to know that right now we have a nice trace. So I would put your motion blender over here in the water so that way you can keep a nice clean area. And now we're going to take our spatula and we're gonna set this in and pour the soap base over the top so that way it controls your air bubbles. And kind of just go back and forth you know what 
you just made your first soap with me. Woohoo! You did it! I just can't wait for you to cut this tomorrow and to be able to um, allow that bar to cure a little bit and then use it. So what is curing? So curing is allowing the additional um, water to leave the bar so that way that the bar blathers and lasts longer. The, it's safe to use after 24 to 48 hours depending on the size of the batch but because the sodium hydroxide is no longer in the soap but curing is really about making sure you have weights and measures under control and if you're ever going to sell your bar that you're not lying to your end consumer that that's really what's in that bar so we're going to do a little bit of knocking and then we're going to I'm going to take off my gloves so that way I'm able to um, put the lavender buds nice and neat onto the side of the mold. And then we're going to have some fun and we are going to do a design. So let's open up these lavenders. We're just going to put the lavender on one side of the mold. Just nice and pretty. there and then we are going to take the soap base and we're just going to put it towards us and kind of lift up so push lift up that way we have this nice little fun texture Woo. all right and now the next step is to put the fork in the water and to put the lid on and allow it to set up for 24 hours so this hold on hold on you want to see what we created together voila so i'm going to show you how to remove it from your mold so we're just going to turn it upside down pull it from the wood and then we're going to set it to the side and we're going to lift it up on all of the corners Voila! Okay. There is the soap. There's your mold. And we're gonna put it right back into here. So now we have this looking good. So now we're gonna take our cutter and I'm gonna cut one on either side. So here I'm gonna, I use the fork because I wanna be able to measure out what size bar I want. And it's easy to just line it up with that fork line. And then you're just gonna cut as straight as possible all the way down. Voila, now let's do that again. So I'm going four little pieces of my fork, going straight down. Voila. So now you could take a um, potato pill if you want and soothe the edges down. Otherwise, I mean, look how pretty that is. So let's do that again. It's fun. Okay, so count my little four areas. Go there and then straight down. Can I say Christmas presents or birthday presents or Mother's Day or just me time? So now I'm gonna show you how to, what it looks like with a straight cutter. So we're gonna go on the other side. And then voila, straight cut. So let's do that again. All right, now once you catch the soap bug and you wanna make more soap and you don't wanna hand cut, you can also cut it this way. So this is called a loaf cutter. Okay, you, you, you decided you're really wanting to make a lot of soap. So you just take your log and because you have this beautifulness on the side, you're gonna put it down so that way you don't cut through that. So we're just gonna put it down. And what's so great about this type of cutter is 
your bars are going to be the same weight, same size, consistent, and it's just one nice cut, and voila, you got yourself a perfect bar. Let's see how much this bar weighs. It's a five ounce bar. So once it's completely done and all the extra water's out, I would say closer to probably 4.75, four and a half. So there you go. So the last thing I want to talk about, let's say you did not weigh out your ingredients and you used two, you used a full bottle of sodium hydroxide. I did that too because I wanted you to see what's going to happen. So we're gonna take that right here. And as you can see, it's definitely a lot harder than this bar and the color is different. So we're gonna take this bar out. All right, this is what you call a lie heavy bar. As you can tell, it's already kind of crumby, but this is what, where's my cutter? So let me show you. So this is me using the full 14.5 ounces of sodium hydroxide. See, it's gonna be very crumby, very hard. It's not sellable or usable, it's lye heavy. So this is how you can tell a bar of soap is lye heavy versus you've seen how easy it was for me to cut this soap. So that's why sudzers, you really, really have to make sure you measure out all the ingredients when you are going to be making something. You wanna make sure that you follow your directions, your recipe as close as possible. Like I always say, measure twice, pour once because you don't have an option to you know, measure more than once once you do it. Or once you pour the lye in, it's it. That's what you got. Um, I hope this video was educational. This kit was from Makesy, which I was able to purchase from Hobby Lobby. So any Hobby Lobby near you, you can have the kit to be able to make co-processed soap. The mold came from Hobby Lobby, the lavender buds, the French clay, Everything pretty much came from Hobby Lobby except for the spatula to clean it out. And once you use a spatula or any tools for soap, designate it as soap. The scale has a link below if you would like a um, soaper scale. And if you have any questions or if you need any help, this community is here for you. I am so excited for you to be part of my Suds family. And thank you. And now remember, lather, rinse, profit, repeat. So happy you're part of the Suds family. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you guys loved following Joanna along and getting to learn more about making cold processed soap. If you have not tried it yet, head over to makesy.com and pick up one of our cold processed soap starter kits or our cold processed soap pro kit. And you will love diving into the world of soap making. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to stay in the know on all the latest makers tips and tricks. Now go make it happen.